Scotland, a land that has captured the imagination of people for centuries. A land of druids, potions and elixirs. I've always uh, wondered what makes uh, Scotland so captivating. It's not just its uh, breathtaking landscapes or their charming countryside. It's that their long-standing heritage holds the promise of great things. When in Scotland, you feel like an explorer on a trail to discover the true spirit of life and a want to capture each moment to file away in the catalogue of memories. So I am on a journey to explore Scotland through its culture, its legends, its history and of course, its greatest gift to the world, Scotch whisky. Scotland has managed to retain its old world glory while effortlessly embracing the modern age. Royalty is uh, not just about your bloodline. It's also lived through experiences. Experiences that are awe-inspiring, experiences that are life-altering. And, and it was the search of uh, these very experiences that brought me to this amazing country. And uh, today, hopefully, I'll get an unforgettable insight into the world of uh, 21st century royalty. To meet a real-life royal is a rare occasion and I've got the privilege of meeting an individual who's the perfect representation of modern-day royalty. But before I meet a man of such eminence, I must find a gift that is worthy. To find a gift that's fit for royalty, I have to head to the Holy Grail, a place that truly reflects the spirit of Scotland, the Scotch whisky experience. Having first opened to the public in 1988, the Scotch Whiskey Experience was established to showcase the Scotch whiskey industry to the rest of the world. Today, they have carved a space that allows you to experience and savor a dram in the most premium way. And I had the perfect companion to help me make the right choice. When you visit the distilleries, you're traveling the length and the breadth of Scotland. So the story of the country and the story of its people is reflected beautifully in the single malt and the blend of Scotch whiskies. So I'm going to see the Duke and I want to get him something really special. Uh, what would you recommend? So if it's for the Duke, I have the perfect recommendation in mind. This is a beautiful 21-year-old Scotch whisky. And given those royal connections with the Duke, I think this is ideal because this was created in 1953 for the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. So what do you gift somebody who seemingly has everything? Because, uh, because it's not only about the gift, it's also about what it represents. And uh, this is 21 years of supreme craftsmanship. A drink that's truly fit for a king. Today, the gentleman I'm meeting is an actual descendant of the great clan chiefs of the past. It's none other than the Duke of Argyle, and he's graciously invited me to the Inverere Castle his grand estate in Western Scotland. As you walk towards Inverary, the incredible beauty of uh, the Highlands almost, almost herald the arrival of the castle before you see it. And once you do, my God, the sheer grandeur of it just, just leaves you speechless. Torquil Campbell, the 13th Duke of Argyle, counts among his official titles, the Chief of Clan Campbell and Admiral of the Western Coasts and Isles. He truly epitomizes the quintessential modern-day royal. And in true royal style, 
My welcome was an experience in itself. I started in 1745. This awe-inspiring structure took 45 years to complete. Befitting its royal stature, it has its own armory room and a library full of exquisite antiques and memorabilia in every corner. This place is a living attestation to the fact that being royal is not merely about grandeur and opulence. Rather, it's about a deep sense of responsibility that is passed on from generation to generation. Well, firstly, thank you, Your Grace, for having us here. It's well, I thank you, thank you very much for uh, for the bottle of twenty-one-year-old. I think we well, should probably welcome. probably celebrate that with a a little dram. Slanjava, Slanjava. It's such a beautiful down. This is the sort of the, the heartland of the Campbell family. You know, my family have been in this particular part of Scotland since probably about 1100. And so talking about like royalty, how different do you think it is, say, 200 years back and now? They were very, very important people. I mean, they were, you know, politicians. They ran, you know, my family ran Scotland on behalf of the British Crown. Uh, and they lived uh, a very big and opulent life. My step-grandmother in, uh, in the sort of late 60s, she had 30 staff in the, in the castle looking after her and the family. Uh, today I've got two. <laughs> so, you know, being a duke today uh, is, is very much carrying on a family title, a family tradition. But in, you know, in reality, I'm the managing director, the chairman of a company, uh, and mm. I run a business. Um, we manage about 75,000 acres of land. Right. Uh, you know, we are, you know, one of our big businesses is tourism. Uh, and today we are, you know, one of the biggest private tourist attractions in Scotland. So you were just mentioning that one of uh, the things that you're really interested in is whiskey. Uh, so how did that interest uh, uh, start? Well, I mean, I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm Scottish. That's, right. a, that's a very good place to start. Uh, and I've made it a huge part of my life. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, whiskey is the greatest export out of Scotland. Right. Uh, and I work, you know, tirelessly today uh, to try and promote that and encourage it around the world. You know, one of the one of the things that I found about uh, people in Scotland is that there is, of course, a lot of love for the land and love for the outdoors. Uh, do you find that that's sort of ingrained in you as well? I consider myself to be, you know, I'm an outside person and, you know, I fish, I shoot and I love that because it's such a contrast to my sort of day life which is people and talking and being with people. What followed was one of the Duke's favourite pastimes and what a unique experience learning from him was. Finishing it off in a truly aristocratic manner, I was treated to a view that encapsulated my entire experience perfectly, with the Queen's yacht visible in the distance. You know what's remarkable is that uh, even though uh, the Duke embodies all the classic traits you would associate with royalty, he's so much more than that. And uh, coming here makes you realize that uh, the notion of royalty is uh, so much more than your inheritance and your titles. It's uh, it's about how you wield that privilege. To truly understand how privilege has evolved over time, my next destination is a floating symbol that is synonymous with the royal life. So when the Duke recommended visiting the Queen's former yacht, I was obviously expecting something luxurious, but this, this is just the pinnacle of grandeur. The stateliness of the royal yacht is visible from the moment you step on board. From its name being written in only a single inconspicuous place, because it was so widely recognized anyways, to the beautiful decor that furnishes its rooms. It's luxurious but not lavish. A true reflection of the modern British monarchy. So um, the Royal Yacht Britannia came to um, Edinburgh in, in 1998 and she's been in Edinburgh now as a visitor attraction and a exclusive evening events venue for 21 years. Previous to that, she served the British Royal Family for 44 years. We 
we're here now in the royal bedrooms. So Britannia was very much a ship of two halves. So the bow end is very much the cruise quarters and then the royal side is the state apartments. And right. this is where we are just now. So um, we have the royal bedrooms here. We have the queen's bedroom, um, which interjoins with Prince Philip's room here. Because it was typical for European monarchs not to have share a bedroom, they would have an interjoining door or interjoining um, rooms. Okay. Uh, so tell me something. The interiors are exactly the way they were. Yes. Yes. So it's very much how it was when when she was sailing and with the royal family on board. So, and then behind us here, and um, we have the honeymoon suite. Um, and the honeymoon suite is um, which hosted four, all four of the royal children you see here um, and they had all of their honeymoons on board Britannia. The double bed was brought on board Britannia for Prince Charles's um, honeymoon with Diana. So this is the state uh, dining room. So this is where the Queen and Prince Philip would have hosted many um, presidents, prime ministers, kings and queens. I talked about Nelson Mandela, Rajiv Gandhi, um, President Clinton, many of the American presidents dined in here. People now get a chance to come in and take a look at uh, how they lived and I find that really fascinating. I think it gives us great insight into, into their everyday lives and the real duties that they had as the royal family. And I think that's a lot why people are quite surprised about Britannia. Right. They expect this grand palace but it really does reflect Prince Philip and the Queen's taste. So this is the engine room. Right. Um, and this is where the real workhorse of a ship shows. Um, this would have been noisy and uh, steamy and hot. So a really hard place to work. But how many crew members were on, on the yacht? So when it was a royal engagement and they were sailing, um, it was about 220 to 240 crews. So, um, and you also said it's, it's done about a million miles? You so said? Britannia sailed just over a million miles. Is and this there, is, is quite nice. This dial reflects, yep, just over right. a million miles there. Um, and they had a little ceremony when she reached over a million miles. Well, honestly, I feel like I've just stepped uh, off a time capsule uh, to imagine all the dignitaries that must have been on this yacht, uh, how every little corner of this yacht must have a story, and uh, it's been kept in such pristine condition that you feel like the Queen has just stepped off. While royalty and its institutions may have had their beginnings in years long gone, there are a few that continue to stand the test of time. There's nothing that exemplifies that more than the Srathaila distillery. And within it, the crown jewel of the kingdom, the Royal Salute Vault. For collectors and connoisseurs of aged whiskey, the chance to see the Royal Salute Vault is the opportunity of a lifetime. The, the porcelain bottles, the vintage blends, the time-worn casks have an allure that's incomparable to anything else. And today I'm going to experience the incredible honour of exploring the king of whiskies with none other than Peter Prentice. Peter Prentice is a Scotch connoisseur whose Royal Salutes VIP Relationships Director, as well as the Chairman of Keepers of the Quake. Hi, Peter. Okay, now, Thank great you. To Thank see you so you. much for having us here. It's a great pleasure. Now, Kunal, I'm going to give you the honour of opening the Royal Salute Vault. So over to you. Thank you. Okay. So, so Peter, uh, what's so special about this cask? Well, this cask was laid down in 2004. It okay. was from the very first batch of the Stone of Destiny blend, which is a 38 year old. And what's really interesting about it is it's, it's actually been resting and marrying here for a further 15 years. So it's a, it's a 53 year old articulation of the original Stone of Destiny blend at cask strength with a 15 year second fill sherry butt finish. It is literally priceless. I'm going to ask you to do the honours. Very, very intense. Very intense. This one here is the coronation cask. And this was a blend which was pulled together of whiskies distilled in or before 1962. Okay, so we're looking at now 57 years old is the age of the youngest whiskey in this blend. Probably destined to be bottled 
as a very special edition to celebrate the coronation of the next monarch of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And may I tell you, I have never tasted this cask myself. So this is a first for me, as it will be for you. Wow. Oh my God. Just, just, just have a go at that. That's really good. You're probably one of about four people who've ever tasted it now. No, really? Well, well I'll be the second and the two master blenders along the way, I dare say. Are you serious? I'm so being dead serious. After the master blenders, it's just you and me? This is wonderful. This is, this is truly an honor and thank you so much. Well, today, uh, for the first time on the show, I, I have to say I'm, I'm sort of lost for words. And uh, because what, what I'm having here is, uh, thanks to Peter, is not just a not just whiskey, it's a, it's a sip of history. It's a sip of history. Peter is someone who's a true embodiment of this exceptional lineage. He continued to give me a better insight into why Royal Salute is a league apart at the Shivers Brothers exclusive brand home, Lynn House. So Peter, you were telling us about the 62 gun salute. In the eyes of many people, you'll have heard them say that this is a whiskey that begins where others end. And the gun salute relationship with this particular whiskey goes way back to 1953 and the coronation of Her Majesty when it was created as a tribute to her coronation. So Peter, a lot of the whiskey that's been created uh, seems to be created as a tribute to the royal family, right? Indeed. Uh, so is there anything that's been created recently uh, for the modern royal family? Last year, when Prince Harry married Meghan Markle, we created a very special blend of 70 bottles. And as it happens, oh, we've lovely. only got one left. Um, what's interesting about it is it's a very rare expression for this mark because it's the only one of its kind which has been matured wholly in American white oak casks. So Peter, this has been a really, really special day. Like I've had such a good time. Uh, so what's a, what's a, is there a traditional, like a special traditional way to end this day? Well, the traditional way of ending today has to be a toast with a quake, which okay. is the, this is the traditional cup of friendship here in now Scotland. Let me get one. And given the fact that this has been such a special day, I think we can only do this toast with the 62 gun salute. We drink it in one. Okay. We kiss the bottom of the quake, and we then turn the quake upside down on our head to show, above our head, to show that we've completed the toast as the ultimate tribute and a sign of friendship. Okay, this is the most interesting toast I've done in my life. Okay. Let's do this. Slanjiva. Slanjiva. Kiss the bottom. And on to the head. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you so much. This is one of those uh, experiences that's uh, completely changed my perception about what it means to live like a king. Uh, royalty is no longer about sitting on a throne. It's uh, about welcoming the future with the enchanting encounters, uh, thought-provoking conversations, and, and of course, an exquisite sip of a great whiskey. Words fall short when I have to describe my time in Scotland. But what I will take away is that the true testament of honour bestowed upon people is not about holding that position of power. It's about how they carry it forward.